I don't have any tutoring today and I have to work on my dissertation. So I'm sort of simulating um, a kind of like sitting out on the beach kind of experience just at my, just at my, on my balcony right now. It's like my feet up on my balcony. Um, I wanted to talk about how about half an hour ago, I had these really profound feelings of sadness and I don't want to be negative. I mean, I'm not like depressed at all or anything, but I just suddenly had these feelings of sadness that were very similar to the sad feelings I had in Athens. Um, I think a lot of that came from coronavirus. I think it came from this sort of archetypal consciousness that was coming up through coronavirus for everybody and these sort of memories. But the thing that made me really sad was that I realized that at my age, I'd started to lose a grip on my childhood memories and my memories of being a teenager, which were things that I had held on to so tightly. Um, I had expected to be able to write about those things and share them like decades ago. <laughs> you know? And I realized how strange it was that so much time had passed and now they were not as vivid as they were they were but there was a feeling of like they were slipping away from me and that feeling for me was just as sad as the thought of losing my parents you know and I, I, for women my age there are you know hormonal changes that you go through so you have these weird mood swings like that and sometimes you just start crying like just randomly um but just now i had that feeling when i was thinking about when I was thinking about reading Stephen King when I was in the 1980s and when I when I was thinking about watching Steven Spielberg in the 1980s, all of that just makes me cry because it was so happy, you know, and what I want to share about that is like, I want to share something that's important to filmmaking and to writing books. It's about the importance of fulfillment through these works. When I think about Steven Spielberg, it was the fulfillment of like making things that were impossible come true. And, and, and that had to do with being saved. You know, it had to do with um, just adventure, you know? So I think that the two things that I would bring up most of all would be E.T., and the episode of Amazing Stories where the guy draws in the landing wheels. And I just saw that episode online. I forget what it was called. But the, the kind of fulfillment that I experienced probably between 1982 and 1985 because of that, because of those episodes or because of that, that movie, um, between the ages of about 8 and 11, when I think about the amount of insight that it takes um, to be able to to create something like that, you know, the insight that it takes to create something like that is extremely important. And what worries me about, you know, um, just the, the fact that people study production and that they have to like focus on all these logistics when they're focusing on production, which is really difficult to do. It takes a lot of brains to do that. And there's also a sense of atmosphere and there's a sense of design. There's a sense of visual language, which is, which is very difficult. And that is all the foundation for everything, for sure, because it's a visual language. This is what I'm actually studying and writing about right now. But, but the insight that it takes to create something that is truly spiritually fulfilling you know, so for example, in ET, for me, the thing that I felt was the feeling of watching a boy on a bicycle who was about my age, I think, and seeing him tilt upward and go up into the sky with that bicycle and, and to go up and sort of pass as a silhouette the moon. It was just the most magically fulfilling, happy, happy sort of moment, dreams come true sort of moment 
And I cannot explain how deeply that impacted me as a child. You know? The other thing was with Amazing Stories, the man drawing in the wheels. There were a couple of reasons why that appealed to me. When I was a child, the very first thing that I got any attention for was actually drawing. I, I loved to draw. And my classmates would always tell me I, I drew well. So I had a, a feeling of connection to drawing. But the, the feeling of being in a plane that was doomed, that was absolutely doomed, and to have somebody be able to say, I can make this land by drawing a picture, was, it was every bit as fulfilling as the bicycle going up to the moon, or at least sort of in front of the moon. Um, but it was, you know, it was also salvation. It was salvation at the same time. So those, those are two kinds of fulfillment that are extremely important. Um, that really carried the nation when you think about it, right? But Stephen King, when I think about the two kinds of fulfillment that I felt there, um, I think of ta the talisman, and I think of Pet Cemetery. And I think I was in fifth grade when I read both of those books. And I remember, I remember putting the talisman underneath my bed when I wasn't reading it, and and actually looking toward it when I entered the bedroom, looking toward the space underneath my bed and going, wow, that's alive. <laughs> I was like, this is, there's a spirit. There is a spirit in that book. It was a real living spirit in the book. And I remember um, being amazed at how quickly he made me want to turn the pages and how it was so poetic and so concise and so suspenseful and so charming at the same time, all of that, you know. And um, I remember being drawn to the philosophy in The Talisman because there were basically, it was a parallel universe and there was uh, like sort of the dark version of this, of this one character. And I remember just... It was the life of, of that spirit in the book that just was, that was incredibly fulfilling because it was philosophical. But the thing that was even more fulfilling for me was Pet Cemetery, And that to me is about healing. It's, so it's a different kind of fulfillment. It, it was kind of the same as like the boy on the bicycle in the sense that every child has pets die and it becomes traumatic experience in a, in a different way than for kids who maybe have relatives die. I mean, I think that that's worse, but basically I think every kid can relate to having pets die and it's a very traumatic and a very deep, profound experience. So to have that kind of wish fulfillment, to be fulfilled by this idea that you can bring your pets back, that that's sort of the first step to the metaphor that just incredibly fulfilling but then beyond that 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 it's that it doesn't happen that it can't happen that basically like when they come back they're zombies that they're not who they were and that becomes a kind of healing that whole structure that whole trajectory of being fulfilled and then being forced to see the truth but in a way that's even worse than what the reality is so that it, it heals you it kind of gives you a a kind of solution for suffering in some ways and so fulfillment spiritual fulfillment takes an intense and a great amount of insight and structure takes a great amount of insight and work and Personally, those are things that are very important to me. Those are things that I've always focused on in writing. And I, so I wanted to say that as I was thinking about the impact of those works, again, I felt teary because I felt like they were so much part of my happiness um, when, I was, when I was growing up. 
<laughs> and um, at the same time, I'm at an age where I, I'm afraid of them slipping away. I'm afraid of that slipping away, you know, even from my, my mind. And with that, what I'm writing about is memory. I'm writing about Bergson's philosophy, um, which was basically proto phenomenologist, meaning that he was kind of the pre predecessor to people who believed that all truth is through a subjective experience. But for him, he actually studied uh, about five years of cognitive sciences to be able to have the material to back up uh, what he was saying philosophically, which had to do with the interworkings of perception, memory, and how that has to do with nerves and the nervous system and all that. So it's, he is, he's considered to be the, the godfather of film theory. And uh, in film school, it, it was an amazing time of studying all of the sort of production um, process, being able to actually do the thing, like to make films. But I, I sort of feel like we should have had philosophy. I, sure, I sort of feel like I actually started to think that I would want to go back there and teach the philosophy because I knew that there was this really extensive history behind it. But I didn't actually didn't know how extensive it actually was. Like I, I'm, I, if anything, like the truth is that studying film and with literature can really give you a picture of our entire history as in terms of human culture, and um, so it's been ex extremely helpful. But I mean, what I really wanted to say was that insight and the goal of fulfillment um, and the insight toward toward providing that kind of fulfillment is an extremely important part of making films and writing books, I think. So I want to say thank you to those guys and hopefully we can keep making films.